Year 5 and Year 6, happy Monday. I hope you've all had a lovely restful weekend and you're ready for another week of fantastic writing. Now I want to say a special well done to all the Year 5s because I know Mrs PA was extremely proud of your writing last week and I had a little look at the things you'd been writing and you did a fabulous job and in some ways you did outshine the Year 6s. They've got a little bit catching up to do this week. Now, for the next two weeks, we're going to be using a short video called Baboon on the Moon. And we're going to be linking it to our science, our writing. So at some point, you're going to need to watch this video. If you've already watched it, fantastic. If you haven't, you're, you can choose when you watch it. You can watch it now if you want to, if you think that's going to be easier or you can watch this teaching video first. It doesn't really matter at this point, but you will need to watch the video to um, be able to do today's task. Okay, so as always, we're going to start today with a recap. Then we're going to have a little bit of teaching and I will set you a task at the end. It might be useful to have some pen and paper ready. When you do your task, you're going to need to write in your book or on a piece of paper and then send a close-up photo to Miss PA or myself. Okay, let's get going then. So, recapping on last week. We started the week, for some of us, by looking at clauses. I wonder if you can remember what a clause is. Fantastic. Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, subject and verb. Remember, the subject is normally a noun or a pronoun, and the verb is our action or doing word. So, what can you remember about main clauses? Hopefully, you've remembered they contain a subject and a verb, and that they make sense on their own. I've got an example here for you. I played football is a main clause. I played football and I scored a goal. Can you spot what I've done in that second sentence? Well done to everybody who noticed I've used a conjunction, a coordinating conjunction, to link together two main clauses. We then moved our learning on to subordinate clauses. And we were also looking within this at coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions. So what is a subordinate clause? So a clause, a subject and a verb, but this time it does not make sense on its own. Let's have a look at an example. Until, eat, until I eat all of my breakfast is a subordinate clause. It starts with a subordinating conjunction. Now, I could use that at the end of my sentence. I can't play on the PlayStation until I eat all of my breakfast. Or I could use it at the start of my sentence. Until I eat all of my breakfast, I can't play on the PlayStation. And because my subordinate clause is at the start of my sentence, it has to be followed by a comma. Okay, and we ended the week by looking at embedded clauses. So what can you remember about embedded clauses? That's right, embedded means within the sentence, and it has to have a comma either side. Let's look at an example. I rode my bike on Saturday to the park. So we have our embedded clause within our sentence, within the main clause, and it has a comma on either side. If I was to take this part out, if I was to cross it out here, my main clause would still make sense. I rode my bike to the park. Okay, so we've done a quick recap today's learning objective to identify and use relative clauses in a sentence. I 
You see, I've got a picture of a young man over here. He's looking rather cheeky, making himself a cake. So we're going to start with a simple sentence. James was baking a cake. Hmm, not a very interesting sentence. Simple sentence, a single clause. Let's try and make it a little bit more interesting. He was in the kitchen. Hmm, still not that interesting, is it? Okay, I wonder if I could use these two sentences to make a multi-clause sentence or a compound sentence. Let's have a look. James, who was in the kitchen, was baking a cake. James, who was in the kitchen, was baking a cake. So what I've done here, Year 6, is I've embedded some extra information here about the noun James. And because it's embedded, I've used a comma at the start and a comma at the end. And in fact, the main clause, James, was still baking a cake, is still there. I've just embedded the extra information about James in the middle of my sentence, within the sentence. Now this particular clause that I've added in here is a relative clause because it is giving extra information about the noun. Now, don't forget that a noun could be a person, place, or a thing, an object. Okay, it just so happens that I've got a person here who I'm giving extra information about. I'm telling my reader where he is. Now, instead of using he or I, I've changed he, as you can see here, I've changed it to who. And who is a relative pronoun. It's replaced the noun he. So, a relative clause gives extra information about the noun in the main clause. And I've got some examples of relative pronouns here for you. Now, these aren't all of the relative pronouns, but they are some that will be useful for your writing today. Let's have a look at a few more examples so we're feeling really confident. James, who is in the kitchen, was baking a cake. So which part is the relative clause here, five and six? Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, who is in the kitchen? We've got our relative pronoun, and it's giving more information about James, telling us where he is. Let's look at the next sentence. James, whose brown hair flopped in his face, was baking a cake. Can you spot the relative clause? Great job everybody who said whose brown hair flopped in his face. Again, we've got our noun, James, and we've been given some extra information about him. And again, we've got that relative pronoun at the start. James, who had just eaten his lunch, was baking a cake. Can you spot the relative clause? Well done to everybody who's thinking or saying to themselves, who had just eaten lunch. Again, we've got extra information about our noun and we've got that relative pronoun at the start. 
let's have a look at some slightly different examples then. James was baking a cake which had a Harry Potter theme. Can you spot the relative clause? Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, which had a Harry Potter theme. How did you know that was a relative clause? Brilliant. It is giving extra information about a noun. Which noun is it giving extra information about? Cake. That's right. Remember, a noun is a person, place or thing. This time, I've used the relative pronoun which. And we tend to use which for objects or things. Let's look at the next sentence. James wore an apron that was splattered with cake batter. Can you spot the relative pronoun? Well done everybody, hope you're thinking to yourself, well, that was splattered with cake batter. Which noun is this giving extra information about? Well done everybody, we've got our noun here, the apron and our relative pronoun, that. James shared his cake with his friends who thought it was delicious. Can you spot the relative pronoun? Well done everybody who's thinking who thought it was delicious. Got some extra information there. How did you know that that was a relative clause? You're absolutely right. We've got our noun, friends, and it's giving extra information about his friends. And because it's a person this time, we've got who. Now, I'm going to ask you a question here, five and six. Why did my sentences at the top or my relative clauses in the top sentences need a comma. And why do the ones at the bottom here not need a comma? Pause the video and have a, have a really good look and a careful think to yourself and see if you can come up with a reason. Okay, hopefully you've been thinking carefully. Now, I want to look at the top ones here, first of all. So these relative clauses have a comma at both ends, at the start and the beginning. Is the information in this clause essential or really important to our understanding of the whole sentence? If I took it out, would my sentence still make sense? it would still make sense. So it's not an essential piece of information and therefore it has commas. Let's look at the next sentence. Is the relative clause an essential piece of information? Does it help us to understand the meaning in the sentence? No, not at all. Again, we could take that clause out and our sentence would still make sense. So therefore, I need to use commas. Let's look at the last sentence. Does the clause give essential information? Does it help us to understand the meaning of the sentence? James, who had just eaten lunch, was baking a cake. No, it doesn't. If I was to remove this part, my sentence would still make sense. So how's that different then to the sentences down here? Well, my relative clause in this sentence, James was baking a cake, which had a Harry Potter theme. That gives us information about the cake, which is essential to our understanding. Therefore, it doesn't need a comma. 
James wore an apron that was splattered with cake batter. Again, we've got essential information about the apron. James shared his cake with his friends who thought it was delicious. Again, we've got information about something that's essential to our understanding. Okay, let's move on. Now, I'd like you please just have a quick look at these sentences. We're going to do this very, very quickly because I'm aware time is getting on. Can you spot the relative clause in these sentences? You can pause the video now and replay when you're ready. Okay, first sentence then. Spaghetti, which many of us enjoy, can be messy. The relative clause is which many of us enjoy. We've got that relative pronoun at the start. This is the book that everyone is talking about. That everyone is talking about gives us essential information about the noun. This time, because it is essential, it does not have a comma. She wrote to her sister, whom she'd last saw a month ago. Fantastic. Whom she'd last saw a month ago is the relative clause. It starts with that relative pronoun. It's essential to our understanding of why she's writing, so it doesn't have a comma. People who are resourceful can nearly always find a way. Great work, everybody. Who are resourceful is our relative clause. And it doesn't need a comma because it helps us to understand this noun and why they can nearly always find a way. Again, it starts with that relative pronoun. And so we are on to today's task. Your learning objective, a reminder, is to identify and use relative clauses in a sentence. A relative clause gives it extra information about the noun. Commas are used when the information is non-essential. Okay, that means that the sentence doesn't rely on it to make sense. Relative pronouns, I've got some examples here. That's not all of them, but it will help you with your task today. So your task then is to write three sentences about the baboon that's the baboon on uh, baboon on the moon. You can write about the baboon or his home using relative clauses. Underline the relative clause you have used. Now, in a moment, I've got some pictures and things to help you with that. If you're thinking, "Oh, that sounds a bit tricky," so don't worry. Now, for those of you who like a challenge, when you've done the first part of the task, there is an extra bit that you can do here if you need it. Write a short summary of the key events in the story, including relative clauses. Can you also include a subordinate can you also include subordinate clauses? And again, if you're thinking that sounds a little bit tricky, I've got a slide here that's going to help you. So at the top here I've listed the relative pronouns for you. I've got some pictures from the video and two examples here where I've used a relative clause in a sentence about the baboon. Now I've noticed that time is really getting on now, year five and six, and I've probably been talking far too much. So I'm going to let you uh, get started with your sentences or with your um, challenge don't forget you can pause, you can rewind and replay this video. I really can't wait to read your sentences. Good luck everybody.